Hello everyone and welcome to our daily daf thought for Brachas Tezayin Amid Beis. <coughs> Excuse me. So on the bottom of Tezayin Amid Beis, we have a Gemara over here that's discussing the various tefillas that the Amaroim would say after they completed their Shemoyne Esrei. So we're very familiar. We, when we finish our Shemoyne Esrei, we have a tefillah of Alekai Nitzar. Alekai Nitzar Lusheni Meira. And we'll discuss that tefillah, I think, tomorrow. That's on your Zayin Amid Aleph. Over here, the Gemara has several different tefillahs that different Amarom would say when they finished Shemayin Esrei. The one we adopted is the one from Marbre Mar Ravina that's on tomorrow's daf. We do have on today's daf the tefillah of Rav that we say on Shabbos Mavarchim that we're all very familiar with. etc., etc. But I'd like to discuss now on the bottom of Tezayin Amid Beis the tefillah of Rebbe. The Gemara says, Rebbe Basar Tzlaise, Rebbe, when he comp- completed his Shemayin Esrei, Amar Hachi, he would say the following, It should be the will before you, Hashem, my God, the God of our fathers, Shetatzileinu, that you should save us, Me'azei Panim, from brazen people. And the way Rashi reads this is from brazen people that they shouldn't, no one should incite them to start up with us, because if they would start up with us, we would have problems. We should also be saved, not just from brazen people, but from chutzpah. And the example that Rashi gives over here of Azus Panim is that somebody shouldn't start a rumor on us, let's say, that somebody is a mamzer. Somebody will start a rumor, oh, him, you know, he's a mamzer, he's the product of an illicit relationship. So you see that they had this problem in those days too, when people would come up with completely baseless accusations. But we know nowadays, how often does this happen? Somebody accuses somebody of something completely baseless, with no evidence, with no anything, but you're guilty until proven innocent. And once the accusation is out there, you're tarnished. So we ask the Rabbani Shalom, save us from Azus Panim. May Adamra from evil people, me Pegara from evil happenings, me Yetzara, we ask the Rabbi Shalom to help us and save us from the clutches of the Yetzara, me Chavara from an evil friend that we shouldn't get, we should fall in with a bad group. Mishachin Ra, from a bad neighbor. A bad neighbor could make your life miserable. Umi Satan Amashchis, save us from the Satan. The Satan shouldn't incite up in Shemayim accusations against us. Umi Din Kasha, we want to be saved from an evil judgment. Umi Baldin Kasha, or we don't want to end up in a legal proceeding against a Shvera Baldover who's going to make us miserable. Bain Shu Ben Bris, Bain Shaena Ben Bris, whether a Yid or not a Yid. Now the Gemara makes a very interesting comment. The Gemara says, this was the tefillah of Rebbe. Rebbe was davening to the Rabbani Shalalam after his Shemayin Esrei for protection. He wanted to be protected from all of these different types of things. This is true. He was mispal for these things, even though, like Rashi tells us, he had bodyguards that were appointed to watch him on a constant basis. Antoninus, the emperor of Rome, Antoninus had instructed bodyguards to protect Rebbe. Rashi says, There were officers and bodyguards who protected Rebbe, and they were appointed by Antoninus. Lahakois to strike, Ulihi came and to take revenge, Bachol Ha'imdamalov, against anybody who would start up with Rebbe. So Rebbe had very, very ample protection from the governmental authority of his time, from none less than Antoninus himself. And yet, what was Rebbe mispal for? Rebbe was mispal that they should protect him in Shamayim, because Rebbe understood very, very clearly there is no protection unless you're protected from Shamayim. You could have the best security system in the world on your house, segarnished vert. It's not worth anything. You could have cameras and doorbell cameras and everything else. It's completely worthless. What protects you is Bariolam. Nothing else. It brings to mind a beautiful piece in the Darash Moshe in Parshas Ekev that I want to mention. The Rishiv Zatzal, Rav Moshe Zechet Satim Kaddish Levracha, points out the difference over here between four, Mal- four kings of Klal Yisrael, four Malachim of Malchus based David, how they were mispal that they should defeat their enemies in different ways. The Rav Moshe brings down, uh, it's, it comes from a Medrash, from the Echa Rabasi from a psikta, the Medrash points this out. The Medrash says, Dovan HaMelech was mispal 
that he should be able to chase and wage war against his enemies and be victorious over his enemies. Asa HaMelech was mispal that he should chase his enemies, but his enemies should fall down dead. Not that he should wage war against them, he should chase them, and then I'll be nice, the Rabbanu Shabbat should make a nice, and they should die while they're running away from him. Yahishafat, he was mispal, that the Rabbanu Shalom should strike his enemies, and other Yahishafat was mispal, I shouldn't even chase them. Just the Rabbanu Shalom should take care of my enemies and strike them down, and after he does so, I'll sing Shira. I'll thank the Rabbanu Shalom, I'll sing Shira to thank him. And then finally we have Chizkiya HaMelech, who was mispal that the Rabbanu Shalom should strike down his enemies while he's sleeping. So here you see the difference between four kings. David HaMelech was mispal, he wanted to do a heap load of Hishtadlus. I'm going to go chase them, wage war against them with all sorts of tactics and strategies, and I should be zeichet to be victorious. Asa said, I'll chase them, but I won't strike them down. Rabban Hashem, you strike them down. Yahishafet said, I'm not even going to chase them. You strike them down, but I'll sing Shira to thank you. Chizkiyo, I'll sleep. You take care of the rest. I'm not even going to sing Shira. Says Rav Moshe, Rav Moshe says that what each Melech was mispal for was a reflection of what they felt the level of Emunah and Betachen was in Klal Yisrael during their time. David HaMelech said that Klai Yisrael in his time, or Maminim B'nei Maminim, he was confident that they had proper emunah and betachen, and therefore he said, I'll do Hishtadlus, the Rabban Shalom doesn't, doesn't like doing things B'neis, so David HaMelech said, I'll go, I'll chase them, I'll wage war, I'll use strategy, but at the same time, no one's going to make the mistake of thinking Kaychi Vaitzim Yadi. No one's going to think that we did it. They're going to know that the Rabbi Shalom did it. They're going to know that we made Ishtadlis and our Ishtadlis is really worthless and everything comes from Bari Elam. They're not going to make a mistake. Asa came along and Asa said, I can't do that. If I'm going to go into tanks and, and, and bullets and guns and use strategy and everything else and we're going to be victorious, the people of Chas are going to say, we did it. We were victorious. So Asa was mispal. We'll do a lesser level of Ishtadlus. We'll chase. So we'll make Ishtadlus. But they should die al pines. That way no one will be able to say, we did it. We did it. What did you do? All you did was chase them. You didn't shoot anybody. You didn't hit anybody. So what did you do? You didn't do anything. So we'll, we'll make Ishtadlus. But let the Rabbanu Shalala make the nace, no one will make a mistake, Kachi Vaitzim Yadi. Yahishafat came along and Yahishafat said that the level of Amun and Betach in his day was already such that even if he would chase them, the people are going to say, yeah, we chased them. I guess they dropped dead of fright. So we were victorious because we chased them. Memele Yahishafat said, I can't even chase them. The Rabbanu Shalala should do it and we'll sing Shira. Chizkiyah HaMelech came along, and Chizkiyah HaMelech said, even if we're going to just go ahead and sing Shira, people are going to say, oh, you know why we were victorious? That's our Shira. I guess the Rabbi Nishalayim wanted our Shira. So our Shira is what did it. So Chizkiyah HaMelech said, you know what? We'll sleep. And you strike them down, and Halavai, the people will realize and they'll acknowledge the great nace the Rabbi Shalom made. Rav Moshe in the Sefer, in the Darsh Moshe, he makes mention of the Six-Day War. And he says that in the Six-Day War, you see the tremendous Nisim that happened over uh, the, the immense uh, forces that were amassed against us, and the Rabbi Shalom made such a nace, and the Rabbi Shalom made that we should be saved in Eretz Yisrael, and should we, be, we, we should be victorious. And he says, Halavai, 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 people should realize and acknowledge that it was all Alpines, and it was all through the Rabbi Shalom, and not the unbelievable uh, tactics. Yeah, we were outnumbered, but we came up with this idea, and that idea, and the other idea. Everything happens from Bari Elam. This is what the, the Gemara today's daf is trying to teach us. The Gemara is showing us that Rebbe, even though he had bodyguards, Rebbe understood it's not the bodyguards. We have to know on an everyday basis. You work for a living. You get a paycheck. It's not the paycheck. It's not the boss. That's not what's giving you your parnasa. Your parnasa is coming from Bari Elam. Your gesund is coming from Bari Elam. Everything that you have is coming from Bari Elam. 
Hishtadlis we have to do. We do Hishtadlis because the Rav Shem doesn't give Parnas of Benes. Read through Shara B'tachan. Learn Shara B'tachan and Chavis Alavavis and you'll see it. Well, the Rav Shem has, wants us, we live in a Gashmiistic world, the Rav Shem wants us to make a normal amount of Hishtadlis but then it comes from Bari Elam. Never make the mistake of thinking that it comes from every, anywhere else. I hope you enjoy this and we should continue to reap the Schar of Limit Atera. Everybody should have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you. Be well.